What's up, Foundation? What's up, YouTube? Man, it's me, your big partner, Cartoon53. Man, I'm back again, man. Y'all know it's story time. It's story time. You know, due to my little trip going to Cali, uh, I kind of jumped off subject of stories. But now, you know, hey, I'm back again. You know, I'm going to stick to my bread and butter. And my bread and butter is the stories. I know y'all want to hear it. Y'all want to see Y'all want to feel it. And I'm back again to give it to you in a real way. In that real 5-3 way, you know. But anyway, <clears throat> you can tell from the title what this one kind of about. If you can't, give it to you the thing. <clears throat> but, uh, who it's a lot of stuff going on in this YouTube world, though, man. In this social media world. A lot of stuff going on. Um, a lot of people, they asked me about the fight due to the other participants. Uh, 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 I don't know how to put it, uh, whatever the, uh, the other participant may have going may what he may have going on over in his section hey like i tell y'all it ain't my business don't know about it ain't gonna comment on it um all i know is we gonna get down you know what i'm saying for the culture and do our thing hopefully i hope whatever he has going on don't spill over to the to the where it you know disrupts what we have going on but hey we will remain to be seen. But anyway, let's move right along, man. And this story right here, man, um, one of them stories that kind of tripped me out, man. When I seen it, man, I was right there on the front line when I seen it. And um, just tripped me out, man. Uh, Cause a lot of times with with the Alabama prison system, with the Alabama prison system being predominantly black, um, you know, you know, blacks tend to uh, you know run over run over the whites and do whatever they want to with the whites. Um, you know, they think they all gay or they think they all scary or they think just whatever they may feel or think about them. Um, not all of them like that. Not all of them like that. You feel what I'm saying? Not all of them like that. You got, you got a, you got a few, uh, hard heads, a few go getters running around there, but you know, some of my old stories that I told y'all about y'all seen, where I told you about some of them, you know, some of them hard-haired white dudes. And like I told you, you got, you got two groups. You got the ABs, which the Aryan Brotherhoods, and you have the SBs, which are the Southern Brotherhoods. Um, the individual that I'm speaking on today was a SB. He was a Southern Brotherhood. Um, I've been, you know, doing time with him for a couple of years. I know him, you know what I'm saying. Um, been in the prison with him for a minute. And, um, I ain't never seen them. I ain't never seen them punk the game. I ain't never seen them, you know, just mark out or nothing like that. You know, the white boy was, a, you know, he was one of them. He was a heavy hitter. He was a real go getter. You was going to have to do something to him. But now he was real respectful. He was real respectful. Now, the prison we was in at the time was one of the maximum security prisons. Uh, we was in a prison where y'all seen a couple of months ago where the individual had snuck a gun in and tried to take the prison hostage. You know what I'm saying? This prison was called West Jefferson. You know what I'm saying? Or as known as Donaldson. Um, there wasn't a lot of SBs or ABs in in the maximum security prison. Most of the white dudes that were that came up under those banners were in the the uh the lower level prisons. You know what I'm saying? The prison uh, system um the level right up under the maximum security. But like I said, you did have some that were in the maximum security prison system. And this guy here just so happens to have been one of them. Um, very respectful. Didn't, you know, did he played fair, didn't get nobody way, you know what I'm saying? Didn't get nobody business. And he was just cool dude all the way around the table. You know what I'm saying? If he balled something from you, he paid it back when he said he was gonna pay it back. And 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 that was that. You know what I'm saying? That was that. Um this the white dude that I'm speaking on, he had got into the business of making whiskey. He had been making whiskey now for a couple of months. It's pretty good whiskey, you know what I'm saying? Um, a lot of people had bought some from him. Um, my people had bought some from him. When I say my people, I'm talking about the Crips. Uh, you know, disciples, bloods, or whatever, had been, you know, been buying, you know, whiskey from this dude. And it was good whiskey, you know. You have a lot of dudes in there making bad whiskey. Now, this was before they start making the white lightning, where they start you know, taking the regular, the regular whiskey, uh, as we call in Cali Pruno in Alabama, they call it julep <clears throat> anyway, where you might take three gallons of regular whiskey, you know, drop the stinger in there, burn it off, sting it off and get you one gallon of white lightning. So anyway, yeah, so it was just regular whiskey at this time. Y'all see that shirt, huh? 
Foundation Nation, huh? Y'all see, you know, bang. That's that Foundation Nation for the win, you know? So anyway, we got we got another individual, man. I knew this dude right here. Uh, he was no, he was kind of crafty. He the little uh, dude was out of mobile. Um, now y'all know a lot of times either I won't say people's name or I'll change the name up. <clears throat> on this on this right here, I'm just not gonna say their name. I'm not gonna say the name. Um, it's just like that, you know. So anyway, this and I'm speaking on a black dude at this time. So he, you know, he was out of Mobile. <clears throat> he re he didn't re he wasn't a Crip. He represented something else. What he represented, boom, don't make no difference. But he wasn't a Crip. But anyway, I've been knowing him for I've been knowing him for many many years throughout you know Alabama prison system. Now um, he had he had a little boy, a little girl, a little a little girlfriend. He had a little punk, and um, they was always together. They was always together. Pull, you know, pull stunts together. Did all did all type of stuff together, man. And um, the little dude that he was messing with at the time was a trip to me because I knew the little dude real well before he got turned out. Before he went that route to become a a, a, a little hoo hoo hoo, you know. And um, the little dude was cool at one time. Next thing you know, like I tell you, you never know. Dudes come out on the tier, come out themselves, and just announce, hey, man, uh, I'm a such and such now. You what? Huh? How? You show that what you want to do? Boom. And that was that was kind of sort of like what happened with, with this little young dude, this little young dude right here, man. He was a real go-getter at first, I thought. Hey, I guess life caught up with him one day. He figured, you know what? I believe I want to explore the darker side, you know, and he popped up one day and he started hollering he was gay. Cool. Years later, the little young gay dude and the other black dude they together. Now you know they lived to get they lived together. They did all the time. They 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 lived in the same cell. They was together. You know the prison marriage. They jumped the broom. So um, time was going on. Time was going on. Now they was known. Now they was known for being you know a little crafty. The little, the little young gay dude was really the crafty one. He coerced the oh, his his man, his so-called man, into doing a lot of, you know, shady, nefarious activities. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people didn't want to fool with him and loan him nothing to do nothing with him. So anyway, uh, time goes on. They up and they go to the white dude and they wanted two gallons of whiskey. They wanted two gallons of whiskey. And so... They didn't have the money, I suspect, and they talked the white dude into giving them the whiskey on consignment. Man, you know, one of them, you give us the whiskey today, and we gonna, we gonna break you off when store run. We gonna pay you when store run, you feel me? And so with the white dude being cool like that, you know, he said, okay, no problem. You know what I'm saying? Dudes do all, that type of get out all the time. And uh, But now the white dude trusted him. And he gave him his whiskey. Okay, so time goes on, time goes on. Um, a couple of, uh, I say, uh, not not a whole day. The next day came. They come back to the white dude and tell the white dude, hey, man, that whiskey you gave us, it wasn't no good. It was garbage. It was boo-boo. So now the white dude like, wait a minute, hold on. What you mean it was garbage? It was boo-boo. Say, man, uh, we sold one of the gallons to some other people and they came back and told us that then this wasn't no good. So the white dude tell him like, hey man, I don't know what y'all playing. I don't know what type of games y'all got going on, but uh, no, it ain't that type party. First off, y'all see my, y'all see my little dog clothes. Uh-huh. Y'all see got that Los Angeles dollar, that Los Angeles Dodgers on. <laughs> that go Dodger blue, man. Y'all see him with that LA sign, huh? Yeah, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Wiggles stunting in front on y'all. But anyway, so it's this whole situation started to spin out of control. So the white dude, knowing he ain't made no bad whiskey. Now, what happened was the white dude made some good whiskey, and when he gave it to a uh, freaking frack. 
they tried to pull a stunt. They drunk it or did whatever they did with it, but turned around and had a batch of boo-boo over there in they cell, and they sold it to some other guys. Now, these other guys that they sold them to, they were disciples. I knew them. And the, and the dude that he sold it to was a hardhead. Was a, was a, he was one of their heavy hitters. He was one of their shot callers. And so now, when the dude came back and told freaking Frack, the black dude, the disciple, told freaking Frack, hey, man, y'all need to whoop, 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 wop, 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 man, get my money or something, whatever. This ain't right. Somehow, someway, they twisted it and told, you know, the disciple dude, hey, man, look, no, man, this problem stems from the white dude. Man, the white dude uh, gave us this bad batch of weed and, I mean, excuse me, this bad batch of uh, uh, whiskey and it's on him. Um, We got at him about it. We told him about it or whatever. He said, man, F it. They lied on him. He, t They told him that the white dude said, F, man, F, whoever you talking about, this, 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 and this. So now... You know, now the disciple dude, he, you know, like I say, he was one of their heavy hitters. He was a go-getter. He wasn't having it. So instead of him dealing with freaking Frack, you know, the, 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 you know what I'm saying, the Bopsy twins, instead of him dealing with freaking Frack, who he had got the whiskey from initially, he took it upon himself to come across the hallway and deal with the white dude himself. So now, whatever words was passed with the white dude, like I say, now the white dude wasn't no punk. You just wasn't going to run over him like that. Okay, cool. So now, when the disciple dude came across the hallway and went in the cell and verbally went at whatever he said, whatever was said with the white dude, the white dude, I guess, but I, for, I found out later on, it was something along the lines of, hey man, look, you need to give me my money. Why it went that route, I don't know. Man, sometimes stuff just go like that. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I promise you, I don't understand why you, why he even came over there and went at the white dude when the white when, 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 when the white boy ain't sold you nothing. You bought your whiskey from freaking Frank. You know? But anyway, so now whatever words was passed between him and the white dude, I guess it didn't go right. I guess it didn't go right. But now he, the disciple dude, he explained to the white boy that he got, you know what I'm saying? This whiskey from them. And they said that they came at you and got at you about it. And that you talk about F this, F that, and blah, blah, blah. So now the white dude tell him, man, I don't know, man, what this, that, and the other, boom, 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 boom. Stop it. Dang. Anyway. So the white dude's telling him, hey, look, man, I don't know about none what you're talking about. I, I gave them some whiskey on consignment. You got that whiskey from them. You need to deal with them, not me. And he was right, though. He was right. But now, why I went that route, I don't know. Lo and behold, after a bunch of words get passed, a bunch of whole words get passed, okay, Disciple dude leave. He come back with two motorcycles. They run up in the cell on the white boy, man. Roughed him up. Run up in the cell on him and roughed him up. Took the whiskey he had and roughed him up. Oh, well, you know, hey. I guess you could say another day in the Alabama prison system, right? Right a little bit and wrong a little bit. Okay, like I say, this wasn't one of them white boys, homie. You were just going to do what you wanted to do with. Mm-mm, 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 mm-mm. White boy here was going to attack. Okay, y'all done took my whiskey, y'all done beat me up, cool. So now, he, but now, he took it upon himself to say, you know what? I could easily want to go get at the dudes who just ran in here and did this. But his logic was, you know, this whole situation started with freaking frack. They the ones who lied on me. They the ones who said this, 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 and this. So he said, you know, he told himself, you know, they the ones who gonna get it. They the ones who gonna get it. Which I can write, I can rightfully understand where he coming from. 
to a certain extent. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I can understand it. You know, but me, be, me personally, I, I'm gonna get who come in there and beat me up and took my stuff. But now, he wanted to go to the source, cause he, I guess it dawned on him that freaking frack when they got the two gallons from him before, they had no intentions on paying him back anyway. Period. So he said, you know what? That's where I'm gonna strike. Man, look. Later on, at dinner time, come. I'm on the top tier. Now, you know the sidewalk talk. Ain't no secrets in prison. Stuff gonna ease out, get out. So now everybody around the block semi kind of know what done happened, kind of know the story. You know what I'm saying? You get bits and pieces of it and all that. Some people don't care. You know what I'm saying? They figure somebody else been it. You know, I ain't getting no, I don't care what's, what, what, what they got going on. That ain't me. Um, me, you know what I'm saying? I dibble dabbled and wanted to hear a little bit more and, you know, ask questions about, oh man, is that right? Dang, what, what, what? You know, boom. So anyway, the white dude, he wasn't going to take it on the chin. They called dinner. They called dinner time. Ch everybody went out to dinner time. Everybody went out. Everybody went to the chow hall for dinner. Um, when people were, when they was coming back, when, you know, coming back, coming back from the chow hall. Now what the white dude did, now one of the most, one, to me, one of the most dangerous weapons that you can use is a box cutter, a box cutter. Um, you, you, if you, you can have a knife this long if you want to. Me personally, give me, give me that razor sharp box cutter. And when I say uh, box cutter, in there we had the the, uh, the real box cutters. I'm talking about where you slide the blade up. You know what I'm saying? The blade come up like that, and the single edge, you know, with the single edge blade, you know, I'm single edge razor sharp, and you could you could like bring it down. A lot of people, a lot of people had them. I had me one. You know what I'm saying? Like I told you before, my weapon of choice was a lock and a sock. You know what I'm saying? I get me, I get me two or three of them good combination locks and put them in that socket. <coughs> put them in two socks. Stretch it out real good. <coughs> Tie that knot in it. <coughs> Have me about that much. You know what I'm saying? Give on it. And man, I was boy. Look here. You can have all the knives you want. I guarantee you that boy, look here, you run up on me with your knife and I got them, I got that lock in a sock. Ooh, I'm going to give you the business, boy. You're going to think I'm a real life Viking berserker. Man, because you got to Because all I need is one good lick. You got to come in and try to, you know, with that knife. Okay, cool. And I'm just, man, you got to look, homie. Man, I'm three, I'm 300 and some change. Hitting four, five, six hundred on the iron pot. Man, I'm swinging like God. Man, I hit you one time. I don't have to hit you in your head, your face, none of that. I can hit you in your shoulder, your arm. I hit you in the arm, I'm going to break it. I hit you in your shoulder, I'm going to crush it. If I pop you across your head, it's going to kill you. Yeah. So I wouldn't, you know, that was, like I said, that was one of the reasons why that was my weapon of choice. But now that, that box cutter was something else too. Man, I seen that box cutter do some damage, boy, that's out this world. Ooh, it be so sharp. You be hitting, don't even know you hit to like, what? Who bleeding? Oh, man, that's me, you know? Yeah. The box cutter will let you know the skin is tender, man. And that box cutter will tenderize it off the rip. So anyway, this is what happened, man. The white dude, here it is. He, I don't care. I done got, I done got my whiskey took. I done got jumped on. He said, I'm finna kill something. I'm finna hurt something bad, you know? So, you know, okay. He waited. He knew his target. He wanted freaking frack. Now he really wanted, he really wanted frack. Frack was, was the, the, the little short one that played the gay role. He was the girl in this relationship. He wanted Frack too, but he wanted Frack. He really wanted Frack. He wanted to do something to Frack real bad. Because Frack was the one who really initiated all this. All of this. You feel me? All of this. So, um, he waited. So now when the doors popped open again, bloom, bloom, 
and people coming in from the chow hall, they coming back from dinner, he came down the stairs. Now I'm up on the top tier and I'm talking to one of my partners. I see him, but now I ain't gonna even lie. I didn't even expect for what took place to take place. I, I, I just I just wasn't expecting. I didn't know it was going, you know. So now when you first come through the door, you have a you have a, a steel cage, you had a hot water pot that fits down into this steel cage, and and and, and the nozzle will come out. And you can get your hot water right there. It's, it just sit right there. And you got to walk, you know, you right there. You got to walk past it when you come into the block. So now when freaking Frank came in the block, freaking Frank came in the block, uh, Frank, uh, just a little show, one little mama, came through the door first, and Frick, the tall boyfriend, was walking right behind him because they was always together. When they came back, the white dude was posted up Behind, up against the wall behind the coffee pot. When freaking Frank came through the door, like I say, Frank, little mama was in the front. Man, the white dude spin off the wall. Woo! He up he up with the box cutter. Now he went, he went to hit, he went to hit Frank, the look the look the look the little girl one across the neck. That was the, that would have been a death blow. Wouldn't have even been no coming back. No talking about it. Straight death blow. When he went to hit him, wham! Out the out the corner, out the corner, frack out the corner of his eye. I guess he caught the movement, and he throwed his arm up like this here. Man, that box that 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 box cutter, that box cutter caught him. Let me show you. That box. See where my see where my C is. He caught him. He caught him across there. Bang! Look, when I say open him up, man, cut him so clean and so deep, like he cut him to the bone. His back arm popped open, boop, just spread wide open, and it was just white meat. It was so sharp and deep, it didn't even bleed. Not for a minute. It just opened up, laid him open. Whoosh, and what number just the white meat and, and little pink stuff and the muscle opened him up. Man, Frack hollered, ah! and took off when he took off the white boy took off right on his heel he trying to run around the stairs I mean run around the shower so now here it is Frick you know what I'm saying them dudes them dudes they coming to the rescue of other 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 little girlfriends he tried to come to the rescue he 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 run up on the white boy he's swinging it didn't make no difference that the white boy got the box cut or not he's swinging ha ah, ha ah, ha ah. So now the white boy stop. He spin. He get up off Frank and he go to get on Frick. He swinging that box cutter. Boom, boom, boom. Now, 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 Frick a kind of tall, athletic dude. He jumping back. He jumping back. He jumping back. So now he run around the TV benches. White boy on him. White boy on him. They running in circles. They running in circles. So now everybody getting back. Dudes getting out the way. They business. Ain't they business? They they ain't in it. Now, by this time, like I say, the police done hit the cold. Police coming. He go to, he stopped chasing Frick. He chased Frack. By this time, Frack done ran all the way up the stairs. The white boy come up the stairs. So, white boy come up the stairs on this end. Frack run down to this end and come down the stairs. White boy come down the stairs. Now, Frick and Frack running up the stairs. And the white boy running up. Then they going round and round and round. Now, some man, the goon squad come, the police come. Um, they come in, you know, they come through the door spraying that mace. They get the white boy, they drench him, they get him, get him on the ground, they get the box cutter, boom. He gone to jail. He gone to jail, which we call lockup in Alabama. And um, that was a wild situation. But now, like, another day, just a, another day in the jail system, y'all. Wasn't nothing spectacular about it. Wasn't nothing who we about it. You see it all the time, every day. Them type shenanigans, them type get downs, man. So, yeah. Um, I never seen that white dude again, man. I never seen him again. I uh, I seen Frick again. I, years later, I seen Frick again. I never seen Frack again neither. Um, well, after I end up leaving, I didn't see him no more. But uh, yeah, that's that story right there, man. Hey, I got more to come, man. But yeah, man, it's me, your big partner, Cartoon Five Three. Man, I'm out of here, y'all. Peace. <laughs>